going on, everybody? It is Wednesday, April 25th. Got a weird slate tonight. Uh, extra game on the FanDuel slate, but not just on the, the front or the back end. Just smack dab in the middle of everything. Um, big time basketball slate. So maybe pay attention to our YouTube channel later today. Just a little little hint, but maybe pay attention. That doesn't matter right now. We got to look at baseball. Um, and I have my co-host and newly christened live stream host, Jake Hari. <laughs> Jake, what's going on? Yeah, I feel like I've been called up to the big leagues. Uh, I got my first live stream under the belt with some technical difficulties along the way. We'll have to blame um, Chris for that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely Chris's fault. Um, but yeah, excited to be there here this morning. Hope you guys listen to the night shift um, that I did last night right after the live stream covering a little bit about today. There was some confusion on some starting pitching, but I think we've got that sorted out at this point. And the slates are a little bit different between FanDuel and DraftKings, but we'll we'll try to talk through that a little bit. Yeah, that's, everybody's being weird tonight. FanDuel in particular is being incredibly weird, so... Nothing new there. No, not at all. Um, let's just dive in. Let's do it. Also, congrats to Meek Mill for getting out of jail. Let's get yeah. that out of the way. Free, too. free Meek. Yeah. Uh, Orioles and Rays, first game up for the slate. Orioles 4.3 run implied total. Rays 4.2. That's a 51% chance to win for the Orioles. Alex Cobb going for Baltimore. Jake Faria going for Tampa Bay. Um, not a game that I generally want to touch too much. Uh, I think that I like Cobb a little bit on uh, on FanDuel. He's 5,500. Um, so, like, I'd entertain that. I'd actually I'd be okay using either of these guys as a punt pitcher on FanDuel. You know, Faria does miss some bats, but he is not the best control in the world. Um, I'd probably use Faria as a number two on DK as well. I don't know. I don't know what I feel about this game. They grayed out okay, but I don't like them. Yeah, I, I think so. Cobb is actually. I think he's off the table for me. Okay. Um, I, yeah, he's I just too don't. Too expensive on DK. I think he's sixty-seven hundred. What is he on Fanduel? Fifty-five hundred. He's four hundred dollars cheaper than Faria on Fanduel. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I just don't think Cobb. He just gives up a ton of hard contact, both both sides too. It's not like he's got some reverse splits and he can just sort of get through this. I think he might get crushed here. Actually, uh, the problem is like the Rays bats don't really offer much. No. So, like, I I don't really want to play Cobb. I think I have some interest in Faria. He's shown some signs of life the last couple starts. So the first two starts, I, I wasn't on him, and he got hit pretty hard by the Red Sox, which we can forgive him because the Red Sox were scoring like eight runs a game yes. on everyone, even Otani, who was awesome again last night, by the way. Um, so against Texas and Philadelphia, his last couple starts, over 10% swinging strike rate in both, a lot more whiffs. So maybe it was just a matchup thing with the Red Sox, and at 6,300, with a four-run total for Baltimore, I, I think I'm willing to take a chance on him on DraftKings. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I, I don't know what to make of these guys' salaries on FanDuel. That's the confusing part of it all for me. Yeah. I just, they're both so cheap, and the implied total for both teams is is low enough that like, it there someone is worth a shot here. I just don't know what it is. I don't expect either of them to come up all that often for me on FanDuel. So I'm not super worried about it. This is basically like trying to figure out if a guy is worth being in four of 150 lineups for me. So yeah, I've already probably spent more time than I should trying to figure it out. No, I, I think Fari is a, a, actually a pretty decent play. Like Agreed. 6,300, you know he's got pretty decent stuff. And Baltimore swings and misses a ton. Top two in uh, swinging strike rate, uh, O swing percentage, and swing percentage. So, like, I thought it was going to be Bundy versus Archer in this game. That's a much different um, game. Which would have been, like, I would have probably played both of them. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Faria isn't, he's, he's 
I think a pretty decent pitcher, and I think he can get some strikeouts here. Um, I'd be remiss to not mention that uh, Pedro Alvarez is one of my uh, spotlight hitters today. At least yeah. I think he is. No, I, I get that for sure. Batting second, right? Is yeah, that what you have 2,300 on FanDuel. Yeah. Um, Maybe I didn't include he's, him. He's a guy who hits the ball really hard, and Faria gives up hard contact. So it makes a lot of sense from just a matchup perspective and then from his price as well, 2,300. You can't really beat that. A guy batting second that could definitely hit a home run. Yeah, I didn't include him. He's fourth for me. So, okay. spoiler alert, he didn't actually make the spotlight hitters that are actually already posted. Um, he was going to. I didn't include okay. him because of uh, the DK price. Not that I don't like the DK price, uh, but it was more of a FanDuel only play. Or a FanDuel primary play, and I already have okay. one of those. Um, I was thinking of Luke Duda. Similar scenario gotcha. here. A lefty guy that matches, that has a low price today. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm fine having like little bits of both of these teams. I can see getting to a stack of either one just like in a very minor amount. The first four of the Rays are fine uh, just from a pricing perspective. You can probably get to a decent Orioles stack if you wanted to fade Faria. Um, but nothing here is like something I'm doing backflips over. I think I like Brad Miller, as weird as it is. No, uh, I don't, he, I don't he's, mind that. He's first base eligible. That's the only downside on DraftKings, really. Yeah. Uh, Carlos Gomez, 3,400 outfielder. I think the race stack will be pretty contrarian just because of that run total. But I don't have much respect for Cobb. No. So I could see going like 2, 3, 4. Yeah. Um, maybe Wilson Ramos for 3,100. You know, not, not crazy. Spawn leading off? Yeah, yeah, but he's just never a guy that's gonna like hit a home run. So that's why I, True. I was like skip over him. But you gotta remember, he's a guy who can steal. I don't know how Cobb is against base runners. I guess I could look that up really quick. Yeah, Cobb's not good. So uh, in terms of holding runners on either, so you can definitely play Denard's man here. Um, yeah, so those top four for me. Okay. Yeah, I like uh, Alvarez and, and Chris Davis on the opposite side if you just want, you know, two guys that could go yard in a in a game. Uh, Alvarez and Chris Davis are always going to look pretty decent. And they've got almost no pricing on FanDuel. 2300 for Pedro Alvarez, 2600 for Davis. Yeah. I'll take my chances. For sure. Minimal amounts of everything in this game, though. Uh, there's, there's nobody that should be overwhelmingly owned. Yeah. Alrighty, here's the weird one. So let's get it out of the way now. Pirates and Tigers. So this game is included in FanDuel, but not included in DraftKings. It's the second game of the Pirates and Tigers doubleheader today. Don't ask me why they're including it like this. It's super confusing. But I believe this is the information that matters for this game tonight. If it changes, I don't know, just tweet at us. Pirates 4.4 run implied total. Tigers 3.1. It's a 65% chance to win for Pittsburgh. Chad Cool going for uh, for Pittsburgh. Matt Boyd going for Detroit. Um, I'll, uh, I liked him yesterday. I'll like him again today. I'm fine having some Chad. Yeah. Um, who'd you say was going for? Yeah, Boyd. Got it. Um, so Boyd's actually been pretty good. Uh, one in run in each of his first three starts, going six, six and a third, and seven innings pitched. Um, so I thought he was going to come up and, and be awful. Um, I know he's a guy I like to stack against last year, but maybe he's made some adjustments. Um, so maybe I'm just not looking to target Pittsburgh bats as much as I thought off the bat. But this game isn't on DraftKings. Um, so DraftKings is just doing this eight-game slate, and then FanDuel is doing nine with this Detroit-Pittsburgh game. So I'm not going to have exposure to this game, obviously. But if I was playing on FanDuel, um, I honestly don't even know where I'd go. Maybe Starwood Marte or Sean Rodriguez if he's leading off. So now the line for this game has been taken down, and it's not what it was. So I had it at... 
monster favorites for Pittsburgh, which was looking a little weird to me, so I just went to check it. Now the line for both of those games is down. So I'm going to grab the implied winning percentages from, uh, from fan graphs and update that a little bit while we're talking here. So let's Did they- drop that to 145, 160. Is there a chance that um, Tyon starts this game? That that might be it. I mean, maybe. So it's supposed to be Zimmerman and Tyon in the other game. Okay. But, you know, that can go any direction. If he says, right. you know, I want to start the early game, I'm sure they would flip-flop. And yep. It's not a problem. It's even less than that. Okay. All right. So that drops them down to, like, 56%. Let's see how that affects everything. Okay, I like that a little bit more. Um, I don't like Chad as much as I did uh, 10 seconds ago, but uh, <laughs> he's still a perfectly acceptable option for me here. Um, I just like the price. He should be a, a decent-sized favorite, so it plays out as a, a fine value pitcher on FanDuel. There are three guys um, in the same sort of range that I'd like to just have an even amount of but we'll get to those guys eventually. For hitters, uh, I probably really wouldn't touch anything here. Um, I don't see any reason to stack up either side of this game. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. sort of with you there. I think just the, the two guys I always look at, um, Castellanos and Miguel Cabrera, would be the guys that I'd look to target against Cool. But like if I was playing on FanDuel, they probably wouldn't even... I wouldn't have any exposure to this game at all if I was making one lineup. Yeah. Um, one thing we didn't touch on in the previous Orioles-Rays game, there's some weather. Uh, I'd be surprised if that game starts on time, but it looks like it should clear up later in the night. So, uh, you know, keep an eye on it to see if that shifts itself out at all. But if it's set up like it is now, uh, you should be fine to grab anybody in the game. It just might not start till like 8, 8.30 instead of 7 o'clock. So. Okay. Uh, the Pittsburgh game looks fine, so they, they shouldn't have any real issues getting that in. Wind blowing uh, straight out to dead center. So I don't want any hitters here. And um, I'll have, like, I don't know, I'm guessing probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, like, 10% of Chad Cool. So. That's fair. I think that's that's decent. I mean, he did, he's an okay pitcher, um, favorited here, right? So Yeah. It, it makes some sense. There's not a ton of pitching in this range of salary, as we'll get to. It's a big time jump above him, and then the like ridiculously big jump over top to to Kershaw. So, yeah, yeah, it's a big one. Not too much to talk about there. Keep an eye on the weather for the Oils Rays game. All righty, Phillies and D-backs. Uh, Phillies 3.7 run implied total. Diamondbacks 3.6. It's a 52% chance to win for the Phillies. Jake Arrieta uh, going for Philadelphia. Zach Greinke going for Arizona. Um, I prefer Arietta to Greinke, particularly on DK because he's $1,500 cheaper. Um, I don't really love either guy in like an overwhelming amount i'd be fine with either i don't i don't dislike either of them but i like kershaw so much more than any of these guys that i'm just going to end up with a lot of kershaw but where do you stand on these guys on dk um i feel like you're going to prefer arietta but i could be wrong um well these guys so i don't really know where i'm at right now because of the weather concerns here that's true do you do you know like have you seen anything about whether or not this game might be delayed because right uh, now i'm just seeing there's... I'm looking at it now i don't think it's gonna get played but i also didn't think they were gonna play it yesterday and they did okay um yeah so this one looks like it might have some weather issues um but again got to check in before lock and and make sure. So this could be a little bit frustrating. I think Granky would be interesting here for, well, actually both these guys would probably be pretty interesting. Not really scared of either team against righties as much. Um, it's, um, I don't know. I mean, they're both priced in a spot where I think they're just pretty good, but I'd rather go up to Kershaw 
And I think there are enough value bets that I can get to Kershaw with a, a cheaper SP2. So I just don't know if I'm going to get to either of these guys, but I think they're both okay plays. Like, I have no problems if the weather clears up with them. Yeah, if I were on DK, my first look would be to do Kershaw, Arietta or Kershaw, Eduardo Rodriguez. Um, yeah, so that's the that's the other guy I like that's sort of in Arietta's range. Yeah. I'm just surprised. $1,500 price gap between Grinky and Arietta on DK. It's $400 on FanDuel. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to parse out those two guys, but with the way the weather looks, I mean... It's possible that you need to fade both of these guys, particularly in cash. Yeah, that's the problem. And I hope I hope this game plays just because you don't want all the ownership to be on Kershaw and Rodriguez and, um, I don't know, Faria. For me, at least, those are like the three main guys that I'm looking to play. Yeah. Yeah, this so, game happening. I'm hoping this is and maybe he has a delay in between. Yeah, if it clears up... You know, this could be similar to that Tampa Bay-Baltimore game. No surprise there. Philly and Baltimore not terribly far away from each other. Um, it might be a situation where it clears up and this game doesn't start until, you know, 8, 8.30, somewhere in that neighborhood. I'd be nervous about it, but it's hard for us to say anything right now. You need to pay attention to the, to the weather in the, you know, 6 o'clock time span. Come to the live stream tonight. Yeah, I was just going to say. People. We'll be talk- I'll yep. be talking about it. I'll let you know what we need to do. So, If we assume yeah. this game plays, is there, do you want any part of the bats? Because I don't. Uh, not particularly. I don't think anybody on the Phillies, because Granky would be someone that I'd definitely have interest in if I thought this was going to play clean. Yeah. On the Diamondback side, man, there's not much either. Because I like to play both these teams when they're facing lefties and obviously there's they're not facing lefties but i think avila is fine as a punt punty catcher catcher at 2900 sure. and then descalso never gets priced up even though he does hit the ball very hard against righties so for 2800 he makes for a, a decent last guy in yeah i'd be fine with like carlos santana yeah just as a one-off his price is always a little bit lower than i expect it to be um, mm-hmm. But Phillies and Diamondbacks are just not a priority to me. No, me neither. Alrighty. Now we, we definitely have something to talk about here. Blue Jays and Red Sox. Blue Jays, four-run implied total. Red Sox, 4.5. It's a 54% chance to win for the Red Sox. Aaron Sanchez going for Toronto. Eduardo Rodriguez going for Boston. Love Eduardo Rodriguez today. Uh, he's probably my favorite pitcher um, like from a value perspective on the board, uh, I'm, I'll end up with a bunch of him and I'll be more than okay with it. I'm not too worried about the Blue Jays. Uh, yeah, so Eduardo Rodriguez has been really good. And when he's been on, and he's he's been on for most of these starts, a little bit shaky in his first one. I think he only went like three and two thirds, but he's top 15 in whisper swing this year. Only 23% hard contact, which I love to see. And then he had a 19.3% swinging strike rate against the Angels in his last start. which And they they have the lowest swinging strike rate in all of the MLB. So he's really, really tough to hit um, when he's got his stuff working. And maybe he's just got it figured out. Um, he's going to get nine righties for the Blue Jays, Yeah, it's looking like. So it's definitely a risky spot for any left-handed pitcher. I mean, 7600 though, I don't know how I don't play him here. It's a bargain price. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. Like, if he was, like, 8500 9K, I would be like, okay, I could, I could probably find someone cheaper. But there's just not much else to like on this slate. No. Nah. So I'm just the taking the talent. The four-run implied total is really nice for the Blue Jays. Like, that makes yeah. me a bit more confident in what I need to do. Yeah. Uh, if you don't like Eduardo Rodriguez tonight, I do think Steve Pierce is a nice, uh, like, I don't know, one-off play, sort of. Dual eligibility on FanDuel. It's got the leadoff spot, so, you know, it's got some pop. Righty-lefty matchup. Yeah. I'd, I'd take a shot there. 
I mean, I'm fine with a contrarian stack again of the Blue Jays if you want to, if you're not starting Eduardo Rodriguez. There's definitely a world where you know they have a lot of righty bats and it goes well for them. Right. He's still got 4.26 walks per nine against righties this year. So small sample, but he does give up some power to them, even though his hard hit percentage isn't very high. Yeah. Um, so just looking on on uh, baseball prospectus right now, I, I sorted by changeups. So of all pitchers that have thrown 50 plus changeups this year, Eduardo Rodriguez is first in whiffs per swing at 60% this year above Chris Sale. Luis Castillo, Carlos Carrasco, Zach Greinke, Cahill. Um, so, yeah, he's definitely got this, the pitch to get these righties out, Yeah, that changeup. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not he's making a miss because this could go really well or very poorly in a hurry for Eduardo if he doesn't have his command. Yeah. I would say that I prefer Eduardo Rodriguez to anything else in this game, but I think it's very feasible to have a Blue Jay stack if you're not using Rodriguez. Yeah, and if you're making a bunch of lineups, you should probably get a little bit of both here. Right. Uh, so like <clears throat> Pierce, Hernandez, Smoke, Solarte, Russell Martin, uh, you know, I think those five guys would all look perfect. But, you know, getting Martin at 3,000 on DK as part of a stack is perfectly fine to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. And I, don't, I wouldn't expect it to be terribly highly owned either. No, I, I doubt it. People are going to want to use Eduardo. They, he's been really good, so there's there's no denying that. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to touch on? Do you want to talk Red Sox bats? Uh, I'm not all that interested. For me. Yeah, I'm not all that interested in Red Sox bats, which is scary to me. Yeah. Sanchez has always been really good at limiting hard contact, and um, it's obviously a really bad matchup for Sanchez, so I'm not looking to play him. But I think, like, J.D. Martinez is fine. Mookie Betts is pretty much always fine. And then Ben Benintendi is just there. Like, they're just priced up too high, I think, for me. Yeah, I think they're all priced where they should be, basically. So it's not they don't stand out as anything crazy. If you have yeah. a Red Sox stack, you know, more power to you. I wouldn't tell you to not do it. Um, and I'll have little bits of them for sure, but I don't. They don't strike me as a team that's going to be terribly popular to stack tonight. It might be a good reason to stack them. Right. <laughs> um, all right. Let's move on. Indians and Cubs. Indians four run implied total. Cubs three point seven. It's a fifty four percent chance to win for the Indians. Trevor Bauer going for Cleveland. John Lester going for the Cubs. Um, I'm not really wild about either of these two guys. I just think that there's better value way above them and slightly below them. So they're kind of trapped in this middle ground. The Grinky, Bauer, Arietta, Lester group um, on FanDuel are guys that I'm not planning on having a ton of. Uh, if I look at it on DK, it's kind of a similar situation. I'd rather go all the way up to Kershaw or drop it back down to Eduardo Rodriguez. Uh, I don't have much of a preference of either of these guys. If I needed to pick one or the other, I would probably take Bauer, but I don't really want either of them. Yeah, I I think I sort I'm sort of right there with you. Bauer has an 11% swinging strike rate or higher in his last three starts. I think he's I'm gonna want to use him at times this year, but for 9K against the Cubs. Uh, I just think there are better spots. I'd rather pay down for Eduardo, like you said. Um, and then Lester, just not a guy that I really ever use. Better real-life pitcher than DFS pitcher. And we know about his um, lack of being able to throw over to first. So if Jose Ramirez gets on or Lindor, they're probably taking a base here. So those would be two guys that I look at for Indians bats, but not going with a full-on stack i'm trying to look and see where the indians okay so the indians are 11th in the weighted stolen base metric on fan graphs i was trying to see if they were like really difficult to deal with on the base path but it doesn't seem to be anything too crazy i thought they were a little bit higher than that i mean yeah, they've got I, a few guys that can steal yeah they i mean they definitely have they have guys that are 
like plus runners. Um, I was making sure they did, they weren't one of like a crazy team that swiped a ton of bags because that would be no. a like the Nats swipe a ton of bags. Um, so I'd be interested to see how that would go against Leicester, but it's not as big of an issue here. Yeah, yeah. I don't. This is a game like I just don't really want a ton of. Again, I, I don't like the pitch. Like I like the pitching. I like Bauer and I like Leicester, but they're just they're priced correctly and the game's tight. And I don't really like any of the hitting in this game. I, I can't imagine really having much of anything here. Me either. It's kind of depressing. It's just like a good game. I wish it were a game that mattered and not just an Indians-Cubs game in on Wednesday in the middle right. of April. Yeah. Because Lester Bauer in this game, you know, this could be a Game 2 World Series preview. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Might be. Yeah, I'd be... More than okay with that. Yeah, I got I got nothing. I don't I have nothing uh, interesting to add. Neither do I. Yeah, let's let's get on to a, a yeah, different the one. The next couple games we're, we're gonna have a lot to talk about. So, Dodgers and Marlins. Dodgers four point five run implied total. It feels like a typo, but uh, Marlins two point three, which is without question the lowest we've seen since we've been doing these. Uh, seventy-six yeah. percent chance to win right now for the Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw going for LA. Trevor Richards going for the Marlins. Um, really like Trevor Richards here. Now nah, I'm just kidding. You, you it's, did? It's, it's Kershaw, okay. and it's only Kershaw. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Well, tell me, tell me what you like, but <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, no way. It's it's just Kershaw for me here. To as far as. Kershaw versus Miami bats. Definitely not taking any any Miami bats here. Um, he's he's Kershaw. He's not as elite as he once was. I don't think swings and misses are down a little bit. But this is the Miami Marlins, and like just going through individually, it's just not a good matchup for any of these guys. Not even like a neutral matchup. Kershaw could definitely strike out eight to ten in seven eight innings. He usually just goes like seven innings, which kind of gets frustrating. But um, for 14K, like I don't think he reaches quote unquote value, but I think he's very clearly got the best chance to be the high scoring pitcher. So I think I can find some value bats and a, a value SP2, whether it's Rodriguez or um, Faria, that I could use to make up the ground. He's like he's without question the safest pitcher on the entire slate. Yeah, like like how? Just, yeah, he will be dramatically owned in in cash scenarios on both sites as he should be. Um, you know, you're you're getting too cute if you try to think about like the reason why you shouldn't have him tonight. He's just like he's just good. There's there's definitely some game theory in a GPP scenario to not be on him, but. In cash, like that, this is he's the safest play you're gonna find. Yeah, and I, the weird thing is, I think I could fit Kershaw pretty easily with with my favorite stack. So nice. it's just like I'll take the 25 DK points. Like I, I think he gets 22 DK points here, like nine times out of ten, maybe maybe more. Like he, it's just such a safe play, and I'll just take the points because I'm not confident about. Really, any other pitchers on the slate? I've got him at twenty-seven, which is yeah. eight higher than than Grinky, who is next in line. Yeah, like, and Grinky's got the weather issues. Arietta's got the weather issues, and then there's just no one else that's in his league. Yeah, it's when you can get a matchup against the Marlins on a day where you know the next closest pitcher from salary is $4000 away from you on DraftKings you've got pretty much whatever you want like he's just he's a salary pay, play plain and simple um, you can grab him grab a step down uh, starting pitcher too and probably get to you know whatever stacks you really want to get to there's enough yeah. value stacks out there tonight that you can get the best of both worlds i think yeah so that's where I'm at. I think I'm just going to eat the Kershaw chalk and move yeah. on and differentiate elsewhere. Yeah. And I like Dodgers bats. Um, yes. So Seager, Bellinger, Jock Peterson in particular on FanDuel, where he's only 2,200. 
Uh, he'll be a cornerstone of a lot of my lineups. And then, you know, Yasmani Grandal always works, especially on DK where you need a catcher. Uh, and then after that, you know, whether it's Kemp or Puig or Chris Taylor, like you can get a nice combination of anything you want here. Um, I, I'll, I like just about everything for the Dodgers. I probably won't have a ton of Max Muncy, but <laughs> otherwise I'm fine. Yeah, uh, Dodgers bats are, I think they're all in pretty good spots here. Uh, Grandall and Bellinger, I think my favorites. Seager probably up there as one of my favorites. And then if Jock Peterson's in the lineup, do you know if he's going to be? I have him in a fifth right now. So Okay, then yeah, I like him. Um, Richard's not a guy that's going to really miss a ton of bats. Chris yeah. Taylor can hit righties really well. Puy can hit righties really well. Uh, so there are like six or seven Dodgers, Matt Kemp, like that you can use pretty pretty safely here. And they're not priced up all that much on DK. So I like them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dodgers will be one of my more popular stacks outside of the next game, which will be the chalk stack of the day. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm in for the Dodgers. I'm in for Kershaw. I just want everything on the L.A. side is good for me. Everything on the Marlins side shouldn't be good for anyone. <laughs> yeah. Rangers and A's. This one's the big one. Uh, 5.1 run implied total for the Rangers. 4.9 for the A's. That is first and second on the slate right now. 51% uh, chance to win for the Rangers. Doug Fister going for Texas. Kendall Graveman going for Oakland. Uh, I don't want any pitchers here. Do you? No pitchers here for me. Just absolutely no interest in either guy. They do not miss enough bats. And there's a lot of hard contact. So yeah. should be some bats we like here. I don't know. You, you can talk about your favorites, and then I'll just add on. Yeah, so uh, two guys in this game, one from the Rangers, one from the A's, both made spotlight hitters. Uh, the first being Matt Joyce, uh, projected to lead off for Oakland. Uh, has absolutely mashed lefties in his career, barely hits righties. I put the slash lines in the Spotlight Hitters article, but it's comical. He's Matt Joyce is basically me versus lefties and like an incredible MLB player uh, versus righties. So he's 2,800 on FanDuel, 3,500 on DK. Uh, I just He's going to end up in an overwhelming amount of lineups for me to have that second highest implied total and to get a righty. And a righty that is like hittable in Doug Fister. I can't get enough Joyce. Um, I feel very similarly to Matt Olson. Olson, uh, 2,900 on FanDuel. So another guy that I'm very interested in. After that, uh, I'm happy to stack up with Jed Lowry, you know, Semyon, Chris Davis, Matt Chapman. You can go any sort of direction uh, for an A stack, and I'm fine with it. It might not be the most cost-efficient stack, uh, at least on FanDuel, it's a little bit better on DK, but you want to go after that implied total. Side note, lots of guys in the A's lineup with uh, an M first name, Matt, yeah. Marcus, Matt, Matt, Mark. Mark. It's just yep. like they're all the same dude. Super confusing. <coughs> um, what are your thoughts on the A's? Yeah, I love the A's. Fister, 52% hard contact against lefties this year. I think Jed Lowry is... One of my favorite plays on the entire slate, $4,600 Jed Lowry. Um, just, he's just been awesome against both hands, and Fister's not really a guy that you're worried about uh, striking you out. So Lowry's scoring up everything. Matt Olson, huge power. Um, the hard contact for Fister should not go well for him in the start. Matt Joyce, like you said, he's awesome against righties. Has he been getting pinch hit for is the only thing that I'll need to to check. I don't know if you have that. Um, uh, because let's take a look. I'd be surprised. They, at they've least done a really good job of this lineup is structured. Yeah, they've done a really good job at balancing the lineup. Because if they're doing that, like he would get pinch hit for if there were runners on base, and the game was tight. Um, yes. I, like mm. you know, if they're if it's second and third and the seventh. Um, you know, tie game, then Matt Joyce is going to face a lefty and he's going to come out. But mm -hmm. it's a very specific situation. So let me look at his game log. Okay. See what his plate appearances have been. So, I mean, uh, Joyce is going to get at least a couple at-bats against Fister. So, I mean, easily one of those could go over the fence. 
um, or get ripped online for a double, like I think he's pretty safe for 3,500, as safe as a hitter can be, really. Um, so every time that he's hit leadoff, he's had at minimum four plate appearances, never less. Um, okay. It's either four or five or six. So it doesn't look like they're yanking him too quickly. Awesome. Uh, four is not, obviously not the best, but um, you know you should expect five from him in a leadoff spot. And his price on DK maybe is baked into that, like his his potential to get pulled yeah. a little bit earlier than most guys. But thirty five hundred is a really good price for anyone leading off against Doug Fister. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, Texas bats. Graveman oh, just yeah, just a guy that not he's not gonna make you miss. No. Uh, Beltre has a questionable tag next to him, so I don't know if, if he's going to be in the lineup. But Do we know what's wrong with uh, him. I don't. I didn't see that last night. My teams were. I'm working on it. My team was dead pretty early last night. Left uh, hamstring. Oh yeah, he's probably not going to play. Uh, okay. Adrian Beltre has been diagnosed with a left hamstring strain. He'll be reevaluated call- Wednesday, but this has disabled list written all over it. So. So Gallo for 4,100, I love. Yeah. Mazzara for 3,500. Chu for 3,600. Those are three really good outfield plays. Gallo would be the top guy, but everybody loves playing Gallo. So you might get Mazzara and Chu a little bit lower owned. Mazzara, uh, spotlight hitter today. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I'm in for Chu, Mazzara, Gallo. Um, I think Ronald Guzman's a guy that won't be owned terribly uh, highly in this game, but... You know, a prospect, he has power getting the matchup against Kendall Graveman. I think Guzman could be a, a nice sneaky play in a Rangers stack uh, to make that stack differentiate a little bit. Because they're going to be the most popular stack, I would imagine. You think Rangers or A's? I would guess Rangers. Okay. I think these might be the two most popular stacks. Maybe the Dodgers sneak in there. But yeah, I, th- I think definitely two out of the three yeah. um, top stacks and. They're definitely up there for me, but I, I like one in the next game we'll talk about that'll be even better. Who is going to play for the Rangers if he's out? Didn't they just call up a guy? Uh, Guzman. Man. I'm opening their depth chart now. So third base. Okay, so that it's probably going to be uh, Profar at third, maybe? Or... Could be. They won't play Gallo at third, right? Um, has he ever played third? I honestly do not know. He he used to. Okay. Um, he's played 92 games. He started 80 games in, in the majors at third. He played 66 games last year at third, so they might just go to Gallo yeah, at third. They could. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, they have options. Um, yeah, uh, Ranger stack is great at... In particular, the first six guys on DraftKings, DeShields, Chu, Mazzara, not Beltre now, Gallo and Profar, um, will look great. Nothing changes here for me if Beltre's out of the lineup. They're still they're still a team you want to stack. Um, like, it'll fix itself. <laughs> Whoever they're putting in in place of Beltre in this lineup is going to have uh, a bargain price. So it'll look perfectly fine. For sure. Yeah, I, I I can't get enough of this game. Um, they'll be the the two stacks I have the most of. Yeah, real uh, good hitting weather, like s- about sixty degrees, a little bit of wind blowing out. Um, probably overall the best hitting environment. Yeah. Outside of L.A., but it's a better like park for hitting in Texas. So. Yeah, with the wind blowing out at a decent clip, perfect weather, crap pitching like this. This game has the recipe for a ton of runs. Yep. Alrighty. Royals and Brewers. Uh, Royals, 4.2 run implied total. Brewers, 4.8. It's a 56% chance to win for the Brewers. Jason Hamill going for Kansas City. Julius Chassin going for Milwaukee. Uh, No thanks on the pitching here. I think you can make a case for Chassin. Uh, It's definitely a really scary... Um, matchup anytime you play Chassin, even if it's against a, a triple A team. Um, like, I, I, he's definitely could get touched up by Mustakis or Duda here. Yeah. 
Um, but if he can survive like that bottom of the order, um, Jorge Soler, Cuthbert, um, Alcides Escobar, Alex Gordon, these guys should he should be able to get him out. Yeah. Um, he's favored. He's forty nine hundred on DraftKings. So if you want to on FanDuel, that's the lowest salaried pitcher. Yeah, if you want a mega punt and just hope for twelve points out of Chassin, I think that that's a, a fine way to go. Um, you'll definitely be a little bit different. I don't think he'll be very owned tonight. But no, I would agree with you there. Yeah, I don't so, think you need to go that low today. You, and you might not. I, I haven't even started making a lineup, but it, it seems uh, like the there's enough. Like the Rangers and A's stacks are cost efficient too, so. I don't. I don't see. It's going to be hard to like n- use the rest of that salary. I think. Yeah. Even agreed. on DK, if it, if it's if you go Kershaw and Chassin, I think you'll be able to put in whatever you want from a bat perspective. Okay. We'll find out. Yeah. I can't run rotor. I can't run fantasy cruncher right now on DraftKings. So, so yeah. So I just wanted to to just point that out. Like he's a guy that I'm at least a little bit interested in, um, just because of that price. So. No. Uh, I'm, I'm with you there. Like he would go really nice with a Rockies in cores stack when they're right. expensive. Um, I do like bats in this game on both sides. Uh, Brewer stack is obviously going to be the more appealing one. Uh, Yelich, Shaw, Thames, all getting the matchup against Jason Hamill, who's you know not the best. Um, so getting that lefty righty matchup is perfect. If you want to have Lorenzo Cain, I think he looks good at the top of the order. And then I'll always take Ryan Braun. I don't have any problem doing that, especially on FanDuel where his price just continues to be crazy low. So no problems with a Brewer stack. Uh, where are you looking? Yeah, I like, I like the Brewers once again. Uh, they were like my favorite stack last night. Started off pretty hot in like the third or fourth inning, and then they just didn't really do much afterwards. And my favorite guy, Yelich, I think he only had one hit, just a, a little single there. So it was disappointing overall, but if you had Kane and... Um, Shaw, you, you probably did okay. Yeah. Um, so those are two guys I like. I, I love Yelich again. Um, I'm just going to give him a pass for last night. Love Shaw again. If Thames is in the lineup, he's got a questionable tag. Um, but if he's in the lineup, I love him. And really, it's the lefties that I'm prioritizing, but sure. Hamill can get hit by both sides. So Braun and Kane definitely in play for me. Let's take a look and see. You said who has the questionable tag? Thames? Yeah. Let's take a look. Shaw for 4100 on DraftKings. is He's just underpriced like every slate. I, I don't understand it. Um, but I'm just going to keep taking advantage of it, I guess. Um, going to undergo tests on his thumb left early oh. yesterday. Yeah, I, I don't like that. I don't like hand injuries. Neither do so I. So anything... So, uh, yeah. Okay, maybe not Thames then. Um, I just don't want to mess around with a thumb injury. Yeah, I hope they just I don't could put get him taken in out at any time. Yeah, make it make it easier on us. Don't put them in. Yeah. Give them some I still rest. like the brew the rest of the Brewers though. Yes, me too. Four point eight run implied total. It's third. Um, it could possibly pass the A's at some point in time for second. So, just stick to those bats. Um, yeah. I recommended Luke Duda in spotlight hitters today. Twenty three hundred. On FanDuel is an absolutely preposterous price for someone uh, in this matchup. Chassin is not like a guy that's just going to put a lefty bat on lockdown. Um, so I like Duda a lot. I'd be fine with uh, a Royal stack actually on DK in particular. You know, Duda, Mustakas, John Jay, and then, you know, if you want Merrifield or if you want to use Salvador Perez as your catcher, I think that's more than okay. Uh, I wouldn't expect a lot of people to be on the Royals, but Duda is a guy that should get a look. He's just that's just the wrong price on FanDuel against a righty like Chassin. Yeah. Um, so Duda and Mustakis, like, give me some of those guys yeah. on DK. They're a thousand apart, so Duda probably a better play, like point per dollar. But you got to play him at first base, so I don't love it. I like some other first baseman a little bit ahead of him. Mustakis up there with one of my favorite third base plays of the night up there with like Shaw and then maybe like Jose Ramirez would be the only other guys that I would put up there with those two. Yeah. So 
Love me some Moustakis. He is crushing the ball. He's like top 10 in average exit velocity against righties over the last few weeks. So love targeting guys like that, and I don't think he'll be super highly owned. I I agree. A a Royal stack could be a little bit sneaky today. Yeah. Final game. Cardinals and Mets. Cardinals, 4.5 run implied total. Mets, 3.8. It's a 58% chance to win for the Cardinals. Uh, Michael Waka going for St. Louis. Steven Motz going for the Mets. Uh, I like I like Waka here uh, quite a bit, especially on FanDuel, where the win is a little bit more valuable. 6,600. Uh, to run out Waka on FanDuel, you can pretty much use any bat you would like. Um, he would be a, a perfect starting pitcher, too, for me, if I wasn't using Eduardo Rodriguez. Uh, so some combination of... Kershaw Rodriguez or Kershaw Waka would be the direction I'd be going on DK. You're going to tell me you don't like Waka, though. I think he's all right for 6,300. <laughs> um, no, I, I like he's got to be a guy that uh, I at least consider for 6,300. Decent favorite, and I love the Cardinals bats here. So I think he's got a pretty good chance to get a win. Um, so it doesn't really have a ton to do with Waka. Like I, I think he could get a few strikeouts here go five or six innings and just be okay. And for 6,300, that's really all you need to do. Um, but I like. I think Steven Matz could get lit up here. I Yeah, you were trying gotta, to stack against him yesterday, right? Yeah, so I'll, I'll same thing, like 30% K rate this year, uh, 7.4% swinging strike rate. So the Ks just aren't sustainable. He's probably getting a lot of called third strikes, which... Um, I don't think he's going to be able to do against the Cardinals. It's a 211 BABIP this year. A bunch of hard contact, um, especially in three out of his four starts. So he's like, I think he gets crushed here. Cardinals are my favorite stack of the night. Ooh. I love Tommy Pham, Matt Carpenter, even lefty lefty, uh, Dexter Fowler. Marcelo Zuna has been pretty bad, but I'm still looking to play him here. Jose Martinez, probably my favorite first base play of the entire night. And Yadi Molina, probably my favorite catcher play of the entire night. Well, now, I didn't see this one coming. Yeah. Favorite stack of the day. Last yeah. time oh. I heard something like that, the White Sox went bananas. So. Yeah, so, and Mats is really bad at holding runners. Okay. Too, which him and Lester are the things that just, they, for, some, for whatever reason, he just cannot hold runners on. Um, so, like, that's just a bonus. And I think that they're going to hit him pretty hard here, too. So, I love the Cardinals. It's it's decent weather. Um, yeah. Even Jorko and DeJong have power, too. And uh, Jorko's pretty cheap on DraftKings 3,200. What's the weather? The weather's fine for this game, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's 59. So, yeah. just good enough. Good enough um, for me. I like a Cardinal stack. Uh, I wouldn't have put it as my favorite stack of the day, but I don't mind it. Um, you know, I like Fowler almost every day. Uh, I think Tommy Pham is in a great spot. Ozuna's in a great spot. Uh, I don't... I'm not wild about Jose Martinez, but I guess I like him a little bit more on DK. Same price on FanDuel and DK. So they're not the best stack on FanDuel. Um, their pricing just kind of sucks. That's fair. But I'd be, I would definitely have them as a, a fairly regular stack tonight. Yeah, I, um, it's it's a combination of I think that all these Cardinals hitters have good individual matchups, and I think Mats is getting really lucky right now. So I want to be on um, the team that goes off on him, which I think is is coming, whether it's tonight or in the next start or in the next start. Um, if he keeps posting numbers like this where he's getting lucky, then I'll keep stacking against him and and wait for the regression to come. You heard it here, people. The last call was the White Sox. And... No, I think the last call was the Brewers. Chris Chris put me on the spot and said, who's your like sneaky stack on the night? And I said Brewers, and they were all right. They were nothing special. So well, I'm like one for two. You know, Shaw went yard. Kane went yard. Thames and Yellich, though. Three for four. Braun was two for three with two walks. Yeah, they were all right. Those four guys. <laughs> yeah, Yelich um, crushed. Just, just take the White Sox credit. Yeah, 
I'll take credit for that one. That, that was a pretty good call. It was. It was a great call. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What? DraftKings on Fantasy Cruncher right now is jacked up. Is it? I think so. So let's take a look here. Uh, this was the crunch that I ran uh, before we started for FanDuel. Um, lots of Kershaw. Then it's Rodriguez, Chad Cool, and Waka. Um, what I'm going to do before uh, before I put a final crunch in, I basically want those three guys in equal amounts. In this case, it's Rodriguez, then Cool, and then Waka only has a little bit. But I'll, I'll boost Waka so that those guys are basically neutral because i don't ha- i don't have much of a preference for him and uh when it splits out like this it's it's a bit too distinct to the like the math of it all so i want to have those three guys plus kershaw in like 90 something percent of my lineups okay uh stack wise a lot of dodgers a lot of a's a lot of rangers those are the three clear ones for me on FanDuel. Um, i'll have lots of those guys you know, this one's going to look a little bit different now with the, the potential Beltray news. But when I go to DK, yeah. they've got, like, in the game filter section, if you want to filter by slate, they have a half game slate for 705. So I don't really know what that is. If you pick the main slate, it includes the Tigers Pirates game, but not the Mets Cardinals game, which is weird. So this might work, it might not. Hmm. I feel like it's not including all the games. So, like, is Arizona included on here? No. So, for some reason, Arizona isn't... Sh- like, it's not showing all of the teams. That's Arizona is just not included on here. Even if I select everything and don't filter for any particular part of the slate, I don't think Ariz- like, Arizona is just not on here. I'm not, like, And neither are a couple other teams. So, unfortunately, people... I can't crunch any uh, DraftKings stuff today. It's not my right. hands. It's not my product. It's all right. Just stack up the Cardinals and you'll be good. Exactly. Um, just, just do that. Yeah, so it's hard to fit a full Cardinals stack because if you want to get, like, fam in there. Um, so you're going to have to get a little bit creative if you want Kershaw, unless you really, really pay down for your second pitcher. But yeah. I'm going to try to make it work, get a get a. Th- three to five man uh, Cardinal stack in there against the fraud, Steven Matz. Um, yeah. And if you could do it, the Indians would go really well with the Cardinals, but I don't think you can get to Kershaw because you can get the, I mean, you, the Lindor, you, Kipnis, Ramirez. Oh, that would be nice. And then you'll have all of the outfielders for the Cardinals. So they'd, they'd fit well together. Um but I don't. That might be tough to do with Kershaw as well. That might have to be like so, Rodriguez and Waka, plus Cardinals and Indians or something. Yeah, you can almost do it. Um, I don't know. You'd probably have to go down to Chassin. That'd be the only thing. Yeah. So if you're if you're comfortable doing that, then more power to you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'll have this in the show notes again. I think we're done. Did you have anything else you wanted to touch on? Um, just check out the uh, spotlight hitters, stacks, and um, pitchers, and then the rankings later today. Okay. Uh, one quick plug. Uh, go to playline.com slash r slash awesomeo if you haven't signed up for Playline yet. Um, we are partnering on a, an NBA contest tonight. It's the awesomeo.com presents $1 million perfect line bonus, $2,500 guaranteed. The tournament is called You're Awesome. It's uh, $1,000 to first place. You'll be taking on myself, Jake, Chris, Awesomeo. Uh, we'll, we'll be in this tourney, and um, the goal is to pick the points, rebounds, and assists for Jimmy Butler, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. We'll have an article out uh, this afternoon um, detailing how to set up a line for one of those guys. So keep an eye out for that. But if you again, playline.com slash r slash slash awesomeo. If you have not uh, signed up at Playline, you'll get a free five dollars uh, for signing up that way. Uh, there's also a bonus for um, your first deposit. So check that out. Uh, NBA has four games tonight. Uh, so I may or may not be looking at that in the early afternoon if people are around. Uh, so if you've made it to the end of this video. 
uh, I'm probably going to do a live stream around noon or one o'clock for like 15, 20 minutes and, and talk some NBA. So, so people don't have any more heart attacks about the lack of uh, NBA videos from me. Yeah. No hockey for you though tonight. Just one game. There's one game. So if you're playing the showdown, um, well, don't play the showdown, but <laughs> I might play the showdown. Um, but just let me burn my money and um, just enjoy enjoy your bankroll. We'll have some decent sized NHL slates coming up once the second round gets going. There you go. That's all I've got. Uh, best of luck to everybody tonight. Live stream starts at six. Come see me where I will be back and better than ever after my uh, Tuesday night off. Um, any last bit of advice? outside of play the Cardinals? Yeah, just, just play the Cardinals. That's it. Uh, good luck tonight, guys. Good luck, everybody. We'll talk to you again soon.